Well, hello everybody. My name's Ian, and welcome to my shed. Right, uh, well, I've come in here to do some scrapping and tidying up. What usually happens, I come in and I switch the, uh, the PC on, uh, pop up a YouTube channel and listen to some music while I'm scrapping. What happened is I saw K uh, Dan from KND scrapping saying, is anybody live? Is anybody out there alive? So I ended up going on there and not doing any scrapping. Spent two hours chatting and getting no work done. Which, he's quite, he, he's quite up there, you know, smart as a fox, because he's scrapping as he does his live stream. But by the by, that finished, and I decided to get my finger out and get stuck in. One of them is this, uh, my last video I was telling you, I was going to, See if I can shorten a fluorescent light fitting. So instead of taking a six foot tube, it'll take a four foot tube. I have had people tell me that it won't work, but I have to try myself. Now I have to know whether it won't work or will work. But, but is, I really don't have room on my bench to uh, to tattle such a long project uh, long not as in length of time probably only take 10 minutes but the length of the actual fitting so I, I thought well I need to tattle some of this lot and that got me thinking that everyday sellers was uh, wanting to know about how to scrap uh, Capacitors. Oh no. uh, I've got another one here. A uh, couple on this board. And then that got me thinking on. Well, I want to do light fittings. Some of these have uh, what you call igniters. Do we? Focus igniters. It can be little square plastic things like that, or it can be a bigger lem many any um, in, um tube. It's aluminum. So it's aluminum. Where, where am I I'm speaking to too many of those people across the pond? It's aluminium. It needs scrapping. So the question is I, I, I don't know. What's inside one of these? I, I don't, to be honest, I don't know. I've never done one. I think I just tend to throw the, uh, I tend to throw that, well, I, I take the plastic end off and throw it in my aluminium pile. But, uh, whilst we're here, let's check it bit. As far as I can figure out, we're not going to be using any power tools. So let me introduce you to old Roger. There's old Roger, a Merston's beer. Uh, again, I did I mention this in the last video, that I went to the same brewery where they make this stuff. It is a strong, dark, pale ale. But uh, we'll have that to help. And we'll also have it to celebrate. And what do we celebrate? We have just pipped over the 10,000 mark. I paused a moment there while I poured uh, a glass of, uh, look at that, Delphini, nice glass. Probably a shame to put beer in it, but uh, needs must. Now, I do actually know who was the 10,000th subscriber. And uh, I'm contemplating on sending them a little something. If they're really lucky, they might even get a sticker in summer whoa whoa that's uh it's like you can chew that that is really nice if anyone sees that old roger they do another one actually called old tom uh, but tom's got a ginger flavor to it anyway enough of that big thanks to everyone for getting me over that 
10,000. Although I'll probably wake up tomorrow and YouTube's done a purge and I've gone down to 9,800. So, I, go on, I'll take this moment to say, Bob from Gill Skills just put a video up, very despondent and saying like, just he's gained nowhere with YouTube. Well, I, I, I can't I can't offer advice. All I can say is, it's called YouTube. So, do it for you. It's easy to fall into a trap of doing it for everybody else. I did comment on Bob's channel saying, look, I, I, I know a few people, a few channels I watch, and they might only put out three videos a year, but I still watch them. They're not interested in numbers. They're not interested in monetization. And let me tell you, even though at 10K, you don't get a lot of money off YouTube. You know, probably doesn't even cover my monthly internet bill. So don't think you're going to get rich off YouTube. Not unless you're up there with lots of money and you're doing all the monetization and the merchandising and everything else. The, the, the patrons, the memberships. It's the add-ons that make you the money, not the YouTube revenue, ad advert revenue. But enough of that. Once again, that's just a by the by. Thanks very much. Let's get back to everyday sellers. She wants to know, is it worth, or how do you do, what do I do to capacitors? Say you put the tripod. Right, I mean, we'll start off with what we've got. I mean, what we're talking about. There's you are. A foot. By, yeah, not even two foot. 20 inches, a foot by 20, well, not even that. Foot by, a foot square I've got to work in until I get rid of the stuff. A capacitor. You see them on plenty of circuit boards. There's, there's a circuit board. And that's a very similar capacitor in that. Take it off. Always make sure that they're uh, you've grounded them. You don't want any nasty shots. I mean, that one, for example, 450 volt, 220 microfarads. And you can get much bigger. And you've got smaller ones. All these are capacitors. But... Not even I will do those small ones, but we've got two in a row there. Got a doubt. Short them out. Rubber handle pliers. Just touch the uh, both connections. Short them out. Just cut them off the board. And then spray them off. Stuck on with glue. So where we got? I've shorted them. Double check if you have to do. Although most of my circuit boards have been here for several months. Right, you've got a choice. Why are we going to strip these? Solars, why? Well, take a knife. Score it down. Take it off. And you've got an aluminium casing. How to get it out there? Well, normally, I get something like a big old kitchen knife. Stick it across there. Hack it down. Like a butcher's knife. But uh, you can see I'm in a state of disarray. And I can't just put my hand on one. So, I've got a... Scraper blade. It's uh, not that one. This one. I use this one because it's all broken, but it, it has been sharpened. I've got a V block. Just makes it easier because it holds a circle. You could make one out of two pieces of wood easy enough. And I just cut it like that. So as Pull the aluminium off. There we go. Piece of aluminium foil. For the seconds that it takes 
you can also pull the fittings out the middle there's a magnet and a magnet you'll find so it's only the, the, the top that's got a little wire on that's magnet magnetic if I cut that off I've got a little something that's that's non-magnetic whether that be brass whether it still be aluminium I don't know we'll just put it down Um, this is, you know, micro scrapping. You know, e waste bike could be turning in his grave. You know, he's not dead, is he? Uh, he'd be turning over in his shop saying, Ian, you're wasting your time. As most of other folk would also say, you're wasting your time. Get on to bigger stuff. But the answer to that is, well, this come my way. I've got to deal with it. Whether it's little or whether it's a lot. I'll deal with it. What have we got here? I don't know. We've got some sort of metallic strip with an insulator. That could be aluminium. I don't know. I don't deal with that. That does get disposed of. Uh, that was the big one. Oh, was that that one? That was that small one. Same again. Take it and I just kitchen knife's really easy. Big old kitchen knife. Straight in half like that. The plastic comes off. Peel the aluminium off. Now there's no fluid in that. All the capacitors I've ever stripped, I very, very rarely ever see a capacitor that's got liquid electrolyte in it. So I, I can't answer. Some, I guess, are going to have uh, a liquid electrolyte in them. I don't know how you're going to deal with that. Let it leak over your bench? I don't know. Right, that's two little bits. Right, that one's a slightly bigger one. Solars. Everyday solars. That's being a little bit presumptuous, isn't it, to say solars. Already we're on short name terms. I don't need to do that. I just like to sometimes play around when I'm scrapping. Stick it in me. Stick it in there. Ain't going to move round. You've not got one of the, you just need something sharp. You know, there's a, a chisel, a chisel that's, that you can hammer on the end because it's got a metal end, metal end. And you're just going to hammer it until you've gone all the way through. Split it open. You can see, aluminium. Is it in a form that you can weigh in? I don't know. I don't normally do this. I just open them, poke the bit out in the middle, and uh, I've got some aluminium for my tub, which I generally flatten. So there you go, all the everyday solars. That's uh, how I strip my capacitors. Let's see. I don't go down that small, though you can if you wanted to. Right, let's move on. Let's go back to the uh, to the fact that when you've got a fluorescent light fitting and you strip them, you get that block that's got copper windings in you usually get a a plastic capacitor and then some 
you get an igniter. I don't often, I don't know what's in an igniter. So, I'm about to find out. Uh, I didn't say it was going to be uh, an elegant way to get in. Just use my hammer, break it open. So we've got some uh, potted compound, plastic casing, there's nothing in that, that is just purely potted compound and I think what appears to be a capacitor inside, but we will cut it open just to find out. And there we go. This particular igniter looks like it's just a capacitor and called an igniter. I've got no doubts it's got some kind of electronic difference. <clears throat> Here we've got a bigger, a bigger uh, igniter, power igniter. So... Again, just rip off what I can. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I use this uh, chisels thing to cut that aluminium, but I'm wondering if you can do it with a, a knife. You probably could, but I find it just as easy to split with a shirt and uh, well that's a scraper that's a chisel and then you can just open it up peel it round and there's the aluminium outer casing and we've got a solid yeah not a hard plastic softish plastic What's in, what is in that? That appears to be a magnetic, uh, appears to be either potting compound, but it's got the colour of like transformer steel. So I'll tell you what, we've already started. Let's, let's, let's chop it in half. And that ain't coming in half so easily. Ninety degrees. Let's do it. Not ninety degrees. One hundred eighty degrees. One hundred and eighty degrees to that. What have we got? Let's switch back to the brick hammer. Switch over to its flat. Not easy. It's not easy to get into. Seems what I'm doing is peeling it off from one side. And there's the rest of the handle come off. So what I might do as a project now is either replace the handle or put a metal, well some metal to it and have a proper something that'll stand up to a bit. Oh look! Look at that there. Focus. We'll have to focus the copper. So this obviously is a different type of igniter. 
think this come off a great big industrial lamp. I think Snobby Scrap Picker had one on today, on his video today. He did several microwaves and then he showed a big uh, high pressure sodium lamp. So possible that that has, is very similar. It's come off one of those high, high pressure sodium lamps. Is it worth getting in? No, <laughs> it's not. Right. I'm not going to bore you for the next 10 minutes why I stripped that. Let me turn the camera off. So, quite a bit of bashing later, and we've uncovered what appears to be. Well, I don't know. I think the connect, correct term would be a choke. I don't know how a igniter or a ballast or a choke works we've got something that appears to be like a resistor in there and then a capacitor and then connected into that is this these copper windings you've got one two three three lots of copper windings all right uh i do know that uh you get a a fluorescent tube it, it, it's filled with a gas and if you get the current high enough it will arc across the gas excite the electrons inside the gas and make them fluoresce that's why they're called fluorescent you know now that's why you have that little i think what you call one of these things, I've got one round here somewhere, there we go, called a starter, a starter, and they're made for certain sizes, so that would fit a certain size of tube, which I think is why somebody's saying to me, you can't take a big fitting and put a smaller tube on it, because the starter won't be the right to fire it up but we'll see that that's a different video so this thing power goes in it gives it it's probably got inside some uh, coils inside it'll fire it up it'll create a spark which make the tube fluoresce from one end travel all the way to the other end to complete the circuit okay i think and then, if that continually keeps going, it'll burn out. So they put something in uh, called a... Now, I call them ballasts. They are more, I think, correctly termed a choke. So, once that's fired up and got hot, it collapses the circuit. And then whatever power has to go through the coils in there, which choke the amount of voltage going through, or the, it ballasts it out. Listen, 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 I am not an electronicist at all. You know, I can wire things up, make things work, but I don't need to know how they work. You know, it's, I can drive a car, but I don't have to be a mechanic to know how to drive a car. Uh, I can operate a computer. I don't have to be a computer engineer. I don't have to know how a computer works to operate it. That's the same thing in it. It's like, it works. I, I do know a bit more than just like you flick a light switch on and it comes on. Just, just, just a modicum about more. Not, not a great deal. Uh, do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna Google that now. I'm gonna Google how do fluorescent light fittings work? Anyway, me and old Roger 
I'm going to bid you good night. Uh, everyday Sellers, that was basically for you. Sorry it's dragged on so long. And uh, everyone, thank you for getting me to the 10k. So that's big thanks to Romantic as well because uh, he did give me a little bit of a push inside of Dan's scrapping stream this afternoon. Cheers everyone, as always, I'll see you in the next one.